Ranger Bill, warrior of the woodland, struggling against extreme odds, traveling dangerous trails, fighting the many enemies of nature. This is the job of the guardian of the forest, Ranger Bill. Pouring rain, freezing cold, blistering heat, snow, floods, bears, rattlesnakes, mountain lions. Yes, all this in exchange for the satisfaction and pride of a job well done. Crisp fall days mean only one thing, football. When the pigskin parade is on across the nation, fighting 11 swarm over the gridirons. In today's story, Henry and I are up north at Brighton College. It's my old alma mater, and the event is homecoming. It's always a great time, except in today's story, when it's arson. At Brighton College. Yeah, operator. That's right, Henry Scott. Yeah, he'll be up at Ranger Headquarters, Naughty Pine. No, I don't know the number. Well, thanks. Oh, thanks, operator. Hello? Hey, hi, Henry. Fine. Yeah, I just got your letter today. Sure, I'm glad you're coming up for homecoming. Yeah, I called to see where you were staying. I thought maybe I could put you up here at our house. Oh, you and Mr. Jefferson already have arrangements? Well, I, I just wanted to say, too, that I'll have my dad's car and I'll take you out for a buzz around town. Okay, great. Uh-huh. Yeah, fine. fine. Okay, be seeing you then. So long. Ron. Huh? Oh, oh hi, Dad. Sorry, son. I, I didn't mean to break in on your conversation, but uh, you won't be having the car. But, Dad, I just promised Henry Scott that I'd take him out when he got here. Sorry, but you know why. Well, yeah, but... But look, aren't you even gonna... Ronnie, you agreed yourself that it was absolutely fair of me to withhold the use of the car for one month. Well, the month is not yet up. Yeah, I guess you're right. Oh, what a knucklehead I am. Wrecked the car at just the wrong time. So I can't have a good time with a pal. Ronnie, the sooner you learn to stop and think, the sooner you won't find yourself in so many jams. And you'll find life a lot more pleasant. Bill, we want you to have a good time up there at Brighton. I'm glad you're taking off a day. Give us a little peace around here. <laughs> What's the matter, Stumpy? <laughs> Bill been working you too hard? <laughs> uh, of course not. Uh, Gray Wolf and I can handle anything that comes up. Ah, uh, that's right. Uh, you have good time now. Uh, we will. But if you think you might need a little assistance in case of an emergency, just call Brighton College and they'll be able to contact us. <laughs> Maybe you, not me. I'm planning on taking a vacation, forest ranger or not. You know, it's a good thing you're just sort of an ex-officio member of this ranger outfit, Henry, or I'd have your badge right here and now on the spot. <laughs> <laughs> That's a spirit, Bill. Don't let these young whippersnappers get away with anything. You must have discipline in this work. Maybe Henry's getting to be too much like that young bear cub that just called him on the phone yesterday. Oh, you mean Ronnie Winters? Oh, uh, he's got a point there. Oh, Ronnie's just a lot of energy. It's a lot of fun. Yeah, guys who are a lot of fun can get on the borderline and into trouble, too. Well, you know, Stumpy, Henry can take care of himself. Uh, Henry, good boy. Hey, what is this? A meeting of the Parent-Teacher Society? <laughs> <laughs> no offense, Henry. Uh, Stumpy just has your interests at heart. Uh, he's just reading our local sports editor. He's disgusted because Ronnie plays kind of crazy football once in a while. But he's a good sportsman. And he sure can swim. I know. Well, mind yourselves, and you better get going. You're going to miss that game. Oh, but, sis, maybe you can talk to Dad. I need that car. Well, this guy, Henry Scott's coming up here, and I'd like to show him around. Well, just why is he so important? Why, he's a fellow that swam against me in the swimming meet last year. Well, I think it'd be nice to get to know him. Did he beat you? Oh, no, no, I took him. 
But he's a good sport and a great guy. So look, Pat, you ask Dad for me, won't you? No, Ron. I'm sorry. I wish I could help you, but... Well, you know what Dad would say. And I'm not going to get in on your problem with him. I hate to sound like a big sister, but... Well, you'll just have to learn how to use your own head. This is quite a game, folks. Quite a game. It's 19 to 13, state you out ahead. But the ball is resting on the one foot line with one minute to go. Brighton has completed a 69 yard drive down the field, and this tired team is really sparking. Team breaks huddle. Brighton up with a T formation. Hauser calling signals. The snap, and it's Hauser through the right side of the line. He smashed at the line of scrimmage. Did he make it or not? The ref's in there trying to unpile. It is a touchdown for Brighton. Hauser in a magnificent power drive put it over. Uh oh. Wilton's down. Brighton's right end. He's really flat. Heard on that last play. Nope, he can't continue. There will be a substitution. Attention, please. Here comes the announcement. Your attention, please. Winners for Welton at right end. Winners for Welton, right end. That's it. Ron Winters, the Prexy son. A good little ball player going in to replace Welton. Teams are lining up again. It's Wiskowski back for the extra point. Sellers will be holding. The whole crowd waiting to see if this will do it. It's 19 to 19. 15 seconds left in the game. The center's over the ball. The snap. It's placed. And it's off. Oh, no, it's blocked. Somebody broke through right end and slapped the ball just enough to send it offline. That's it. The game's over. Tie score. Brighton 19 and State U 19. Too bad. Brighton could have had the game if substitute winners had held that right end. How about it, Bill? They lost. No, not lost, Henry. They tied. But the conference all is all tied up. That means that it's... Hey, there's Ronnie. Hey, Ron. Hi, Henry. See you later. Sure is glum. Well, any fellow that has the bad breaks he seems to have would take it awfully hard. I guess those state you boys just caught him off guard. Before he could catch on, they'd block the kick. Oh, poor Ron. Never seems to do anything right. I'd like to have you meet my friend Ranger Bill Jefferson. This is Ronnie Winters. How do you do, Ronnie? Sure have heard a lot about you, but I'd like to have my sis meet you fellas. Pat, this is Mr. Jefferson and Henry Scott. How do you do? Oh, I'm happy to meet you. Ronnie's spoken of you both. And Ron, uh, you're President Winters' son, aren't you? Yes, but I try to forget. Seems as if the profs have. Say, I guess I should take you fellas under my wing since you are our guests. Oh, thanks, but uh, I know you and Henry have lots to talk over, and... Uh, I see some of my old classmates over there. Okay. Fine. Take care of yourself. <laughs> Look who's talking. <laughs> see you back in the room. He seems to be an awfully nice man. Oh, none better than Ranger Bell. Best ranger in the state. Oh, come on, let's get going. They're holding up the proceedings for us. Oh, terrific meal, huh? Sure not like most college banquets. Oh, this is the kind of food they serve here. Maybe I think about making this my college. Well, not so all the time. Cafeterias get a little boring. Gravy, please, Ronnie. I'll take some, too, when you're finished. Okay, here you are. Oh, watch it. Oh. oh, I'm sorry. Oh, Ron, right on your new trousers. I'm sorry. I should have grabbed it sooner. Ah, it wasn't your fault. I'm just a Butterfingers. Well, maybe you can get it out right after the banquet. Yeah, I can get it clean. That won't hurt a thing. Some banquet. Yeah, the best part of it was the short speeches. I sure hope Pat didn't mind my horning in. Oh, not at all. She was the one horning in. Didn't get invited out this year, so I told her to come along. I'm upstairs here in the converted army barracks. Yeah, sorry we had to put you up there. They're long overdue for raising, but Dad hasn't been able to get enough funds to start another dorm. Oh, they've been fine. Neat and clean. Hey, I think I'll take a look downstairs in the janitor's room for something I can clean these pants with. 
I just hope old Ed Howard isn't around. He's always jumping us boys for invading his premises. Good. See you later, Ron. Maybe tomorrow. Okay with me. You'll get a chance then to go through some of the buildings. Where's that light? Ah, oh, here it is. Oh, now to find the fluid. Oh, hello, Henry. Uh, have a good time? Terrific. Yeah, so did I. Met a good number of old classmates. Yeah, I saw you yakety yakking your head off. Talk about a ladies' gab fest. Well, your jaws didn't exactly rust out, as far as I could see. Say, uh, plug in the portable. Give us a catch up on the way. Ah, oh, here it is. I guess this rag will do. Looks clean enough. Hey, plug in the portable. Give us a catch up on the latest news. Did you fix that plug? No. I guess that wire's pretty frayed, isn't it? Yeah. But be careful. I think it'll work okay. Here goes. Hey, there go the lights. Yeah. I guess I should have listened to you. Looks like we've blown a fuse. Now, don't worry. The light in the hall's still on. I'll get out into the hall and downstairs. Maybe I can find out. That ought to do it. Hey, hey, what happened to the light? Ah, fuse must have gone. Where in the world is a fuse box? Oh, flew it all over. What a mess. Hey, who's in there fooling with the lights? I was just cleaning. Hey, you guys, I don't care who you are. I'm going to strike I was it. just clearing. Hey, wait a match. A oh, fire. We got to get out of here. Fire. Boy, this guy's heavy. Fire. 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 You all right, pal? All our stuff in there. I can't help it. Hey, look. Here comes Ronnie. Yeah, he's all singed. Yeah. Henry, Bill, everybody get out? I think so. That sounded like your voice yelling after the explosion. Yeah, it was. You sure got singed. Where were you? It's down in the basement. Hey, you fellas, get out of here. That wall may break loose. Come on. Let's get moving. This okay? I guess so. What a fire. It looks like arson to me. Arson? Yeah. Hey, you're the kid that turned in the alarm, aren't you, and pulled out the janitor? Yeah. Good job. Sorry you had to get singed like that. Flames must have jumped up and hit you as you were getting him. Well, I was just pulling yes, him up. Yes, sir. The guy that started this will really get it. Oh, that's too bad, isn't it, Bill? Yeah, whole building's gone. The janitor is seriously burned. Sure ended homecoming in a sad way. Sorry we had to leave Brownsville, but without a place to stay, it was probably best. Hey, look at this. Huh? What is it? They really think it's arson. The way the building went up. Yeah, Ronnie has a nice build up here. Here's his picture. Well, it's a good thing he found the fire, or there would have been lots more trouble. <laughs> Dr. Winters, I've told you and told you that you ought to tear down those old army barracks. But, Mr. Commissioner, I, I couldn't with attendance this fall, best in three years. I had to have a place to put them. But we are the fire department warned you, and you wouldn't listen. Now you've really got trouble. Excuse me. Come in. Hello, Dad. Oh, uh, wait outside a minute, son, please. No, that's all right, Dr. Winters. Just this one last word. You ought to get the remaining temporary barracks down in a month. That's my advice to you. Good day. He sure was burned up, wasn't he, Dad? Yes, I, I suppose I can't blame him. 
This whole thing is really serious. Yeah, I know. So what did you want, son? Say, that was sure a nice write-up in the paper about you. Well, this helps to make up for some of the rough times we've had. Well, Dad, thanks. But, well, there's something I want to say about the fire. I'm awful sorry it happened, especially to Mr. Howard. Oh, thanks for your interest. And I, well... Excuse me. Dr. Winter speaking. Yes, new evidence? Fine. Anything to help solve it? A broken bottle on the basement floor. Yes, it does. That's going to prove it was arson. I hope you really get him. And I'll spare nothing to see that he's prosecuted to the limit. Thanks for calling. Well, son, I think we're really going to get the fellow. That's good. Now, what was it you wanted to ask me about? Well, well, uh, uh, never mind, Dad. I can see you're awfully busy. It can wait. <laughs> Hey, Ronnie, good job. Thanks, Mike. Ronnie, I'm so happy you were right there to take care of things. I'm sure your father was very proud of you. Thanks very much, Miss Kimball. Son, I'm right proud of you. Why, I've known your dad for 30 years now. And I can see that you're just like him. I appreciate your words, Judge Parker. Ronnie! Oh, Ronnie, wait! Huh? Oh, oh hi, sis. Well, why the big sour look? I think all the glamour about being a hero really make you happy. Ah, don't rub it in. Sorry. I guess Dad's taking Mr. Howard's condition pretty hard, isn't he? Yeah, so am I. Hey, Ronnie, your trousers. Yeah, what about them? Oh, I, I know they're singed. I wore them because they're probably ruined for good anyway. The spot's gone. I thought you'd have real trouble getting it out. Mom cleaned it for you? No, I used some fluid and... And? Oh, uh, the gravy came out. Where are you going? Ronnie, when did you get that spot out of your pants? Ronnie, please, where did you take it out? Oh, what? The barracks, wasn't it? Yes, Pat. Oh, Ronnie. It was an accident. I didn't mean it. You haven't told them? Listen, you know adults, they wouldn't listen. I tried to tell Dad, but he was so busy I couldn't do it. But you are going to tell someone. I don't know. I don't know. Dr. Winters, the board of directors sent Mr. Conway and myself here this afternoon to talk to you about the fire. Oh, sorry I wasn't in the office, Mr. Stoffer, but, well, the fire officials wanted me here at the scene. Oh, you gentlemen met my son and my daughter. Hello. Yes, we have. And a nice job, young man. Thank you, sir. Yes, it was. We're really concerned, Dr. Winters. Oh, well, I can assure you no more than I am. But, Dr. Winters, concern doesn't make up for the fact that the school has a black eye. But, Mr. Conway, you can't help it if a building is set on fire. But it's not the arson we're concerned with. It's the fact that the old barracks purchased from the government weren't torn down. We expected that they would be by this homecoming time when the board of directors met. If they had been, this wouldn't have happened. Gentlemen, you, you know the facts as well as I. We've an overflow of students this fall. We've had to put them somewhere. I think that the suggestion from the board was that we should put extra beds in the larger rooms. That might have covered the situation. Well, it was only a suggestion, and I took the liberty of keeping the barracks going in hopes of the building program starting this fall and the new dormitory finished by winter. But that hasn't worked out. No, it hasn't. Well, gentlemen, I can't understand why the board of directors is so disturbed. Simply this. If we don't get this fire solved, our reputation will fall in the eyes of the town, and the alumni will stop giving. Oh, again, sir, may I say something? I think the folks in town are rooting for us. They don't feel that way. Well, that may be the first reaction, young man, but... Dr. Winters, I think we'd best go to your office where we can discuss this a little more privately. Yes, I'd like to. Best not to display our troubles to the whole world. Glad to have met you again, Ronnie. Thanks again for your trouble. 
Uh, come over to the office in about an hour, son. Uh, I'd like to talk with you. Those men practically tore Dad apart. And you've got to see him in an hour. What does he want? I don't know. You got to tell him? But they think it's arson, and if Ed Howard dies... Well, all you've got to do is explain. Oh, I don't know. Well, it's only going to get worse if you don't do it now. Oh, Pat, why? Look, I'll walk over to the office with you, and then you can tell him. Mr. Brown, the state's attorney's office can be assured of absolute cooperation. The men that just left, Mr. Conway and Stouffer, assured you of that, too. And my son should be here any time, and he'll help. But we've got to act faster. Can't you get the students together and see if there are any clues we can turn up? Well, it's afternoon, and they're scattered all over the city in employment. But don't you realize the man is almost dead? He's as good as dead! Well, um... We'll plan on a meeting tonight when the whole student body, as many of them as can be here, uh, will be present. The rest will meet tomorrow. Yeah, I feel lots better now, Pat. Thanks for boosting my morale a little by walking over here with me. Now hurry up and get in and tell him. I will. See you at home. I hope you bring home good news. I'll be there with bells on. Dead, as good as dead. Dead? Tell what you I gotta get out of here. So the state's attorney wants us to give some information about the fire, huh? Yeah, just a routine check, I guess. Did he say they have any new evidence? No, not a bit. I wonder how that old janitor is. Pretty low, I guess. I'd sure like to... Hey, watch out for that crazy guy! Man! We just about got hit. Bill, you know who that was? No. It was Ronnie Winters. Ronnie Winters? Yeah, and he looks scared to death. I'll make a U-turn. We're going to follow him and get him to cut down that speed. Why in the world would he be tearing away like that? Can't seem to overtake him. Well, don't forget, he got a good start on us when we turned around. Yeah. Bill? Yeah? Did you suppose it had something to do with the fire? I don't know, pal, but I sure aim to find out. Yeah, just as I thought. That patrol car's following me. But I'm gonna shake him and, and get away. Sure are. This hilly, curvy country is making him slow down. I don't think he knows the road as well here. That's it. Hey, Bill, look. Huh? He's headed down that hill too fast. He'll never make the curve at the oh, bottom. Oh, I can't look. Hang on, Henry. Here we go, too. I didn't make it. Look what's coming up ahead. Yeah. The curve where those fellas died last month. Henry, we got to force him to stop before he cracks up. Shout at him as we go by. Okay. All right, now. Pull over, Ronnie. Henry. Come on, pull over. You're going to hurt yourself. No one's going to catch me. Hang on, pal. I'm going to force him. God, he's leaving the road. Can you see him, Henry? Yeah, here he is. Oh, he sure took the bark off that tree. Yeah. Let me get this door open. Oh, my head. Ronnie, are you all right? I I, I guess so. If you can move, see if you can crawl out. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, I feel weak. All right, let's see. You look okay. Now, Ronnie, what were you doing? I was just taking a trip. Going awfully fast. Yeah, you sure were, Ron. I guess I was. You could have really hurt yourself. Not to mention the blood all over your clothes and the car. Don't even like to talk about it. 
Only it wouldn't be like that gravy you spilled on your pants the other night. Say, those are the ones, aren't they? Yeah. Well, where's the spot? I've taken it off, but... But I still can't seem to get rid of it. Huh? I don't get you. You feeling woozy? Oh, no, I'm all right, but... But what? Oh, can you fellas help me out? I'm in an awful jam. It's at fire. What is it, Ronnie? Oh, I've been scared of telling, but... Oh, with Dad's car all smashed up, I'm, I'm going to have to make an explanation. Go on, Ronnie. We're listening. Well, I was I was down in the basement cleaning my trousers when it all happened. You were? Yeah, everything would have been all right. But a fuse blew or, or something. Well, a fuse must have blown because the light went out. And I got up to fix him and knocked over the fluid. And then Ed Howard came in, and before I could stop him, he lit a match, and he got it. Yeah. I guess he was pretty bad. Guess I'm at fault, too. You didn't have anything to do with it. I blew the fuse. Come on, fellas. We've got to get back to Brownsville and get this whole thing settled. Yeah, looks as if we're getting going to get some help. Ronnie. Son, are you all right? Oh, thank goodness you aren't hurt. Well, there isn't much to say. I suppose Pat has told you. No, I haven't. That's your job, Ron. Oh, well, well, Dad, I, I was in the basement using cleaning fluid when the lights went out and a fuse blown. And that's where we come in. We were responsible for that. And in looking for the light, the fluid bottle got broken. And Ed Howard came in and lit a match to find the fuse box, and well, that's it. Oh, I'm sorry, son. Only I wish you'd come to me sooner. Would have saved a lot of trouble. And, Ronnie... I stopped in at the hospital to see how Mr. Howard was, and the report's better. Well, how'd you know Ronnie came out here? We only passed him by accident. Well, I was just coming out of the hospital, and I saw him racing out of town, and so I ran to get Dad. Come on. The job isn't finished yet. Ronnie, we've got to get you to a doctor for a checkup. And stop the state's attorney in his hunt for an arsonist. Well, boys and girls, see you next week for more adventure with... Ranger Bill! Stumpy Jenkins, speaking for Ranger Bill, and saying don't forget to hit the trail with us every week at this time for lots of exciting adventure with all the Ranger gang, Henry Scott, and Grey Wolf, and Bill, of course, and me, the old-timer, are all on hand from time to time to bring you the best stories we can find. So you tune in to Naughty Pine and learn the latest that's happening around the Ranger Station or in the mountains and forests nearby, or maybe even someplace further away. Because that young feller, Bill, gets into all kinds of situations and troubles and complications when he's trying to help somebody else. So you be sure to join up with us next week for this half hour of storytelling, and then you won't lose out on anything that's going on. I'll be looking for you, so don't disappoint me.